Ragtime, they called it then. A half-breed music bred in New Orleans out of African drumming and French military marches and Polish polkas. What did it have that was so enticing? The blue notes, the syncopation, the trombone smears? No, the thing that made it irresistible was that it had life. It was fresh and vital. It swung, which was just what the doctor ordered for the jaded European musician who could no longer digest the heavy German cooking of Wagner, Rager, Fitzner, and company. This was spicy, light, effervescent. This was Sal Hepatica. Well, by 1912, ragtime was in solid. There was a steady stream of rags flowing out of Tin Pan Alley. Look at some of these. The sunflower rag. That demon rag. The fellow with the cello rag. Excuse me, that fellow with the cello. That puzzling rag. Another rag. The madhouse rag. That fussy rag by the author of Dat Lovin' Rag. Well, now let's look at one of the great ones. In fact, the first one that ever appeared, which is called the Maple Leaf Rag. It sounds like this. <laughs> Now, just what is it that makes that a rag? Well, first of all, it's a march, as you can hear from the accompaniment. But over that accompaniment, there's nothing anyone ever marched to before. Bright, jolly, syncopated figures that make you want to dance, not march. And the essential color, as you hear, is that of the honky-tonk piano. It couldn't sound better if it were played by the greatest orchestra on earth. It belongs to the bar room. As far as its form is concerned, well, it's the same as any march with its contrasting trio or middle section. In this case, it goes like this. And that's all there is to it. There's no hint of blue notes or of any of the jazz paraphernalia that was later to become so important. Just pure, naive, high spirit. Now imagine how sweetly all this fell upon the ears of these new Euro European composers, especially the ones in Paris who were so eagerly seeking fresh non-Wagnerian waters like Eric Satie, Debussy, Ravel, Martineau, Mio, Tanzmann, Stravinsky. They all grabbed at this new exotic tonic, and drank it up, injected it artificially into their own personal styles and vocabularies, and out came music that was closer to the Moulin Rouge than to the Musikfreunde Gesellschaft. For example, here's a ragtime from Satie's ballet Parade, which is just about two steps beyond the maple leaf rag. It could almost be an authentic original, except every so often there appears some complexity or unexpected turn that reveals the hand of a sophisticated European composer. <laughs> couldn't be Tin Pan Alley, no how. But this is nothing compared to the sophisticated treatment the rag got from some European composers. Stravinsky, for instance, turned out no less than three ragtimes, one more complicated than the other, and none of them even vaguely comprehensible in New Orleans or in Tin Pan Alley, but still born of ragtime. Here's a bit from Stravinsky's ragtime for 11 instruments. And try to imagine, as you hear it, what fun Stravinsky must have had writing it back in 1918. 